We're going to play a little with sweets in order to understand the idea of equations properly. Let's imagine that I have two kids and we're going to say I've got a kid called Lulu and I've got a kid called Dan. And when I hand out sweets to them, they insist that the number of sweets they get are absolutely equal to each other. That's like equations, right? Equations you've always got, left-hand side must always be equal to the right-hand side. No matter what you do, the one thing with equations is you've always got to keep it completely fair. What's on the left is exactly the same as what's on the right. So like Lulu and Dan, they want to have however many sweets Lulu has at any point, Dan must have exactly the same number of sweets. Now what I have is I've got some boxes into which I put sweets. Every time I start off, put a whole lot of sweets into each box. One thing I insist is that each box has exactly the same number of sweets in it. So the box is a bit like the X in our equation. You don't know how many sweets I've put into each box. All you know is that if I've put five into this one, I'll put five into that one and five into that one. If I've put 20 into this one, I'll put 20 into that one and 20 into that one. So it's a bit like the x in the equation, right? You don't know what it's equal to, and that's what you're going to have to work out. You don't know how many sweets are in the box, but that's what you're going to have to work out. I also have a whole big pile of sweets. All right, so now I can hand out my sweets. I can give Lulu that, and I can give Dan, say, that. Now, remember, Lulu and Dan want to have exactly the same number of sweets every time. So if I've given it like this, I've given Lulu and Dan the same number of sweets. Even though they look different, they mean exactly the same thing. I'm just going to write down the side what the equation form of this would be. So what I've got here is something like x plus 1 is equal to 5. Now how am I going to work out the x? How am I going to work out what's in the box? Well, what I can do is I can keep things fair and start taking away the same thing from each side. So, for example, if I take one sweet from Lulu, Dan's going to say, not fair, not fair. You must also, I mean, Lulu's going to say, not fair. If you've taken one from me, you also need to take one from Dan. Now they still have exactly the same number of sweets. And that gives us the answer, right? Immediately we can see that Lulu has a box and Dan has four sweets. So Lulu has a box, Dan has four sweets. They're the same thing. They have the same number. So in each box, they have to be four sweets. So if you look at what we did equation-wise, right, what we did is we went and took one from Lulu, one sweet, and we took one sweet from Dan, and we were left with the idea that in the box there were four sweets. Okay, let's give you one to think about. If I've got the same number of sweets in each box, don't know what it is, but I do have the same number in each box, and I do this. Uh, this is how I've decided to hand them out. I've given Dan seven and I've given Lulu two boxes and three sweets. I want you to pause the video now and figure out how many sweets are in the box. All right, so the easiest way to do this is you take three boxes, three sweets away from Lulu so that you can just see the boxes. But of course, if you've got to be fair, you want to keep the same number of sweets, Lulu and Dan. You've also got to take three of Dan's sweets away from him. Now you can see that Lulu has two boxes, Dan has four sweets, and that should immediately be able to tell you that because you've got the same number of sweets in each box, each box must have two sweets in it. And if we think of how that might look as an equation, 
what we started off was we had Lulu had two boxes and three sweets and that was the same as Dan's seven sweets. What we then did was we took away three sweets from Lulu so we could just be left with boxes for her and to be fair then we must take away three sweets from Dan and then we see that 2x two boxes has four sweets and so we immediately could see that each box must have two sweets. So this thing that we've looked at now gives us the first big, big principle of equations, which is that you always have to be fair. Whatever Lulu has, Dan must have exactly the same. So whatever's on the left-hand side of the equation must be absolutely equal to what's on the right-hand side of the equation. So if you take something from the left-hand side, you must take exactly the same thing from the right-hand side. If you take something from Lulu, you must take the same thing from Dan. And it'll also work the same way. If you gave Lulu something extra, you'd have to give Dan something extra. This is the idea of equations. What you do to the left, you've got to do exactly the same to the right, so that you keep the left and the right exactly the same value. The other very important idea in equations is the idea of an inverse operation. In equations, you've got, say, for example, something like you've taken x and you've divided it by 5 and you've got out an answer, let's say, of 4. And you want to get back to what the x is equal to. The way you're going to get back to what the x is equal to is by using an inverse operation. Let me show you what I mean. Let's have a look here. We've got a little machine that says, okay, if we've taken a number and we've divided it by five, this is what we come out with. Now we want to know what did we start with that we divided by five that gives us negative two or take something divided by five and gives us four. That's the equation we've got here. Or take something divided by five and it gives us eight. Well, you should quite easily be able to figure this one out. You know that if you take negative 10 and you divide it by 5, you get negative 2. If you take 20 and you divide it by 5, you get 4. And if you take 40 and you divide it by 5, you get 8. But let's have a look at the relationship. How would we actually go back to eight, from 8 to 40 and from 4 to 20 and from negative 2 to negative 10? Can you see quite easily that really all you've had to do to go backwards is to multiply by 5? So in fact, the inverse operation of dividing by 5, if you want to undo your dividing by 5, you multiply by 5. And that's exactly what we do in equations, right? Here we've got x and it was divided by a 5. If we want to get back to just a plain x, we need to multiply by 5. But remember, our first rule of equations was that we had to keep be fair. So if we've done multiplying by 5 for Lulu, we must multiply by 5 for Dan. And we'll get here that x is equal to 20. OK, I want you to try one for yourself. Uh, we've got a number that we've multiplied by 7 and then we've subtracted 2 and we get 12. We want you, I want you to work out what the number is equal to. And first you're going to work out what's the inverse operations that you need to do to go backwards. So what's the inverse of negative operation of negative 2? What's it, the inverse operation of multiplied by 7? And how do you get back? Pause the video now and try it. Okay, let's hope you did this quite easily. And you said, let me get a pen, the inverse operation of Subtracting 2 is adding 2, and the inverse operation of multiplying by 7, the thing that undoes it, is to divide by 7. So what will we get? We will say we've got 12, and we've added 2 to it to do the inverse of subtracting 2. And we've taken, we then take the 14, and we divide by 7, and we get out 2. And you can see how that works. 2 times 7 is 14, minus 2 gives you 12. Reversing that, 
right? We had to add 2 to get the 14 to get back to there. And then 14, we had to divide 7 to get back to where we started. How does this relate to what we know about how equations work? Well, you know that this equation would be, we've got the x, we multiply it by 7. So that's 7x. Then we subtract 2 and we get 12. Now let's look at how those inverse operations work. The first thing we need to do is get rid of that subtracting of 2 by adding 2, right? We invert it. And what we do to the one side, we do to the other because we're fair in equations, right? And so we get 7x is equal to 14. The next thing we do is we undo the multiplying by 7 by dividing by 7. And so we will get x is equal to 2.